Hello family, this is Refueling Your Faith, and today we're talking about the book of John. And so uh, in the book of John, we follow somewhat the same pattern that we've seen in the other gospels of when we're introduced with, to Jesus, and then they share, or the authors share, the healing that he did, the teaching that he did, the opposition he had with the Pharisees and the chief priests, and then we hear about how they crucified him, how he died. Um, I'm sorry, well, we see the story about when he is ushered into Jerusalem by walking on the cult, and they say, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord. And then all of a sudden they turn around and they cry for him to be crucified because he's claiming to be the son of God. And then he is crucified and then is resurrected. And so John follows about the same pattern, but in the book of John, we find that we are introduced or we get more of Jesus's proclamation that I am the son of God, that I am the good shepherd, that I am the true vine. He really introduces himself as being in relationship with the father, that if you have a relationship with me, then you also have a relationship with the father. If you don't have a relationship with the with me, then you don't have a relationship with the father. He um, just continuously throughout the entire book raises himself up to be the son of God, not only the son of man, uh, born of Mary, uh, stepchild to Joseph, uh, but the son of God, God's son, who he sent into the world to save the world, not to judge the world. The, judge, the, the world is already being judged. Uh, the father of lies is the father of this world. And those who want to not be judged then would put their faith in Jesus Christ and said that is what the book of John uh, primarily is talking about. Please read that for yourself. Our highlighted scripture comes from John 4. John 4. In John 4, we find that Jesus is talking to the Samaritan woman on his, um, or she is talking to the Samaritan woman, and the Samaritan woman um, doesn't understand that he is God. Um, he's asking her for water from the well, and she is saying, hey, well, why are you speaking to me? I'm a Samaritan and you're a Jew. And so he begins to share with her who he is and she accepts him for who he is. And in verse 39 is where we find our highlighted verse. Verse uh, John 4, verse 39. And from that city, many of the Samaritans believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all the things that I have done. And so when the Samaritans came to him, they were asking him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days and many more believed because of his word. And they were saying to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves and know that this one is indeed the savior of the world. Why did I select this verse? It's because that is what God is calling us to do, to be like the Samaritan woman when we have an experience with God, that we are able and we are excited about sharing it with someone else. Just like uh, the Great Commission, our mission, since Jesus has gone and been with the Father, he's told us that we are to go and make disciples, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. We go and make disciples, and it says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. So our goal as Christians, is that we also need to be about baptizing. We don't just baptize, as I said in the last uh, post, uh, Facebook post, our baptism. Baptism is an outward symbol of an inward commitment to Christ. And so how are the people to know that they're making an in, uh, inward commitment to Christ? It's because God sends preachers, God sends teachers, God sends us into the world to share. And so we're not to have to have every scripture memorized to do that, just as a Samaritan woman did. She just said what happened to her. And so my challenge to you is that each of us take on that responsibility. We know that many people have the gift of evangelism that God places on their heart and helps them to be fruitful in the um 
goal of evangelizing or sharing Jesus Christ with others. But we all have that responsibility to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. And it really doesn't have to be complicated. I had a conversation with a girlfriend this weekend and um, she just impressed upon me how we need to be intentional in our conversations with others. And she was just sharing how she interjects Christ uh, with those that she speaks with. And when she does something kind to someone, she doesn't say you're welcome. She says, you know, really, don't thank me. Thank God who's in me, because if it was for me, then you probably wouldn't get anything. But Christ is the one who is changing my heart and he is helping me to see uh, how coming alongside people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But um, really using our opportunities. When people ask what you did over the weekend, you said, I went to church and it was really impactful to me because the pastor said this and the other and really being able to share our testimony with people. And so that's just what I'm saying. I want to share with you today as you're journeying this faith walk as you're trying to be more obedient to Christ, that you take advantage of the people that God has placed in your life to help them become or to encourage them in their walk with Christ. Understanding that God doesn't allow you to come across people for no reason, that God has not put you in uh, your work environment. God has not put you in your community. God has not put you in your family. God has not put you in the circumstances that he places in you, places you in for no reason. But God has placed you there because he has a work for you to do in that area. And to just be sensitive that to that and be intentional about how you can go about sharing the love of Christ, not only in your actions, but also in your verbal speech to them. Because people can't they can see you and be attracted to the work that you have, but they need to hear your testimony. And that's what the Samaritan woman did. And I love in verse 41, how it says, verse 42, it says, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves and know that this is the one that is indeed the savior of the world. So as you share your testimony, people then will be drawn to the person that has made a difference in your life. And then they will have their own commitment story that they won't be living off your commitment so that you receive all the attention. But when we all, when we turn our attention to God, then God will receive the attention and people will be able to say, it's because of ourselves. It's because of what we've seen for ourselves now that we believe. And that is our goal. And so my desire for you today is to take advantage of the people that God places in your way, that you would be able to share your testimony with them. When God is nudging you, don't deny that nudge, but step out on faith and share with someone. It doesn't have to be accosting. It doesn't have to be uncomfortable. You just share in your everyday sharing why you do the things that you do why you believe the things that you believe. And then eventually God and his awesome power and timing and purpose will be able to help them say, hey, it's not because of what you told me now. It's because of what I have experienced that I now believe that he's the savior of the world. Have a wonderful day. Um, I hope that we'll see you next week and we'll be in the book of Acts. Bye-bye.